Well, hello there and welcome. This is episode 23 of my Minecraft 1.15 Let's Play. I'm here in a gravelly mountains biome that I have stripped pretty bare here of the gravel and I took my material list from my nether hub and I did some calculations based on that. I added together all the concrete and the concrete powder and it turns out that I need 14,964. Uh, so about 15,000, but I only need one gravel for every two concrete powder. So that means I need 7,482 uh, gravel. So that's about 4.3 shulker boxes, which I rounded up to four. And I ended up grabbing uh, just eight because the stuff's useful. And on a side note, this up here is a little bit funny. This is a flying machine from my sugarcane farm. I left it on when I logged out. When I log back in, see if I can actually land on it. It's kind of hard to land on because you see we're actually not that far from my uh, floating island. That's my uh, my uh, um, villager breeding center, and then there's the rest of the floating island. So the sugarcane farm, the thing, you can see the grass, the, the leaves where it broke out of, and it just flew off this way because I, I left it on when I logged out. And so it's way over here. It must have gotten into a chunk where it wasn't loaded. And stopped and so I should see if I can land on man this thing is hard to land on and dismantle it yeah now yeah, this is gonna take a while all right finally landed on it yeah so I should I should definitely take this thing down and then go back down and grab all my shulker boxes so for every gravel I also need a sand in order to make all this concrete powder but on top of that, I have to cover my whole nether hub in glass. So that's another 33,000 blocks of glass that I'm going to need, totaling over just over 40,000 total sand that I'm going to need for this project, which is about 24 shulker boxes. So I got an inventory full of shulker boxes. I'm going to have to grab some chest out of here and fill all that up. And I'm going to have to do a nice long desert haul here. being able to do time lapses and it doesn't look like replay mod is coming to 1.15 anytime soon so I finally broke down and I got a second account and I used it in spectator mode to create that uh, replay it takes a little bit more setting up but I think it was pretty cool and I'm glad I can finally be able to do that I think it's a lot better transition when I work on something for a little while to be able to you know show what I'm doing instead of just a jump cut to hey it's all done so Hopefully you enjoyed that, and I did not know, let me sleep real quick, I actually, I was watching the replay, and it's actually pretty clear that there was a desert temple right there, if you look at it, but uh, it was half buried, and I just didn't even notice it until I started digging it out, so that was kind of cool. There was a um, notch apple in there that I grabbed, nothing else of really interest, I would have preferred to have found that a lot sooner. I'd always wondered, this is a giant desert, and there's like four cities in this desert, and I never found a desert temple until just now. So let's go ahead and load up all these 26, I think, shulker boxes full of sand I got in this chest over here. And I, of course, I always end up digging up under there accidentally. Yep, 26. So, and we'll head on back to the base. So this is where this furnace array is going to come really, really in handy because I can smelt a whole lot of sand really, really quickly. And I need about 20 shulker boxes full of sand. I actually have nine right now because I've used this a few times before. So let's go ahead and load up 12 of these guys. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 
and that should get that running fairly quickly yep it's just started and uh we can load the sand up over there and then i while i'm waiting for all this i want to fix something this light right here is not working there are enough shulker boxes in the system and the light's not working i i got a fix for that the circuit for that lamp is this pink circuit right here and you can see these two comparators pointing out a hoppers here so as long as there's one item in each of these hoppers um, you can see that both of these are uh, comparators are on and this is an and circuit um, so then both of these lamps are off so that means actually that the light should be on and then it uses an observer chain to get all the way up way up there uh, the problem is that items come by come through pretty quickly and sometimes this will go off for a second and then immediately back on and the observer only catches one of those so I actually instead of an observer chain I can't use that for this lamp it's just not it can't keep up necessarily so I need to do a solid circuit the problem is I've got all these hoppers floating around in this area and I need to make sure that any circuit I place in this area doesn't accidentally power any of these hoppers and stop them from moving items through them and that's why I did the observer chain in the first place because that's actually really hard to do but I went into creative and I found a way and let me set that up didn't take me too long to set up the circuit you can see that it's still processing all the glass behind me and so I had to run the circuit around and then up and then this is a safe place for me to do a torch chain up here right next to this I can't put I don't want to power these droppers which I'm not right now and it's safe to put torches next to each other those are fine so that one goes up and then just to make sure anywhere where I'm not actually I don't actually need to transmit I could actually probably do it here as well where I'm not actually transmitting the redstone through the block itself I put it on glass that's actually really important up here because you can see this block right here if this had been a solid block it would have powered that hopper underneath it and then this block right here if this had been a solid block it would power this one right here so that's a nice useful use of using glass in your redstone as you can I guess slabs work as well but you know it looks kind of cool and I can color code it to match the circuit and I can make sure that I'm not powering any hoppers next to it and then just above me you can actually see the light is on right now which is what we want so I've collected all the sand and the gravel that I need to make my concrete and concrete powder for my nether hub and as far as dyes go I have pretty much unlimited dyes of every color except for green and guess which color I need the most of for this thing so I have been putting off setting up a cactus farm I set up a small one some time ago and I don't have a whole lot left here yeah I got like two stacks and I did the math I need about 22 stacks so I probably should have set up a cactus farm earlier but the reason I haven't yet is actually because of aesthetics so cactus farms don't need any light there are no spawnable blocks inside of the thing it makes them a perfect candidate for having ice windows instead of glass windows and those look really cool I just up until now I didn't have enough ice to set up something like that so now that I've got the ice farm I have quite a bit of ice somewhere around here I don't remember where I put it all I have to find it yeah so quite a bit of ice should be no problem now I can set up a cactus farm and I can set that up another number of ways so uh, back in I think it was episode 15 I set up a little tiny one and you can tile those you know horizontally vertically up in the air across the the surface I think what I want to do is I've got all these buildings that are the same height basically and I think it would look a lot better if I had a nice big skyscraper in here as well so a, a big tall towery building and it will actually I've done the sizing and it'll actually fit right here so um, I'm going to just make a big, I'm going to stack 12 of that same farm that I built in uh, episode 15. I'm just going to stack 12 of them on top of each other. I want to build the cactus farm with green concrete, which means I'm going to need to smelt the cactus that I have. And I don't want to load up this giant furnace array here 
for two stacks of cactus or any time I have a small job or anything like that. So I've got this eight furnace array that I just set up. This is a design by Il Mango, and it uses the same basic trick to distribute. It uses hopper mine carts to distribute from one chest into eight different hoppers, into eight different furnaces. Uh, so this is the one where the fuel goes in. I'll put a link to this in the description. It, it's pretty handy. So we can load this up with a whole bunch. I had a ton of blaze rods. And then up here, I actually have to climb up the ladder. And, oh man, I did not think that one through. Well, I thought this thing just barely fit underneath this sorting system, but I forgot that the chest needs to be able to open. Uh, so that doesn't work very well. So I guess for now, I'll put a couple barrels here. It kind of defeats the point of what I was trying to do. I mean, I can still load up four of them fairly easily, but then i got to split them, which is kind of... Kind of not the point. Uh, and then let me let me make sure that I got. Uh, come on, won't let me through. Um, Cause the chest went somewhere. There they are. Okay. So yeah, we gotta, gotta pull those out of there. And then uh, it's all smelting away. It's working pretty well. Uh, it just didn't quite fit the way I wanted to. I don't know if I'm gonna have to move this or this is like basically the only way I could put it. Maybe I could move it. I, I'm not gonna worry about it right now. This is fine for now. I'm gonna leave it like this. The first layer of the cactus farm is the collection area. So all the items are gonna fall into this hopper here. And then it's just going into a couple of shulker boxes here. But I needed to make sure there's an overflow system. This thing isn't super fast, but it's in my main area. It's gonna be running all the time. It's gonna be super easy to forget that it's going. And if these two uh, shulker boxes get filled, I want it to get rid of everything. So it's got this comparator on the second hopper right here. And if it's full all the way, then it sends a signal back down and releases. There's another hopper down under here that feeds down into a dropper that feeds into some water. So if uh, this torch goes off, Right now it's holding the hopper there so that items will go into the shulker boxes. And if this torch goes off, the items will go down and into this dropper. So that only happens when the second hopper up is full all the way. And uh, then it starts ejecting items into the lava. So important thing to have. And I've got that part all set up. So the second layer and every layer after it is a really simple design. I guess this is a variant of Exuma's design for a cactus farm and Il Mango did a test where he tested out a whole bunch of different cactus designs and discovered that this is one of the fastest and easiest to build possible and it's tileable like I said so I'm just going to stack these on top of each other they all funnel into this middle area right here so what I'll do here I just got to do the other side as well it's real simple is I put the cactuses down and then when they grow they're right next to this and they will break and they will fall into a water stream that I'm about to add in a second here. And the water stream can be done simply by putting water in all four corners. And because of the size and shape of this exact thing, you see the water streams end exactly at the center. And so they all push towards the same point like so. And there we go, that's all that is. And then I'm gonna stack this uh, 12 high, like I said. And 11 levels later, I got a giant cactus tower. And I might wanna do something better with this roof here. It just kinda caps off, just kinda ends, and it looked a little better and creative than it does in survival with all these other buildings next to it. It just it seems like it's a little bit off. But I'll fix that later. The functionality is all here. This thing should create something like five or six stacks per hour or something like that. I had to use a whole bunch of them while I was building, so I've only got four stacks right now. But uh, yeah, it's all working, uh, so that should help. Uh, and soon enough, I should have the 20 or so stacks that I need. So I haven't gotten all the green concrete powder I need for my nether hub yet, but I've got most of it and I've got everything else that I need, including all of the black glass that I need. So tons and tons of black stained glass. And I've got all the other materials here. That one's empty um, in my inventory. So lots and lots of concrete, concrete powder, stone to put underneath the, uh, the blocks because everything's got to go up one block. So I need something to go underneath it. I don't actually have enough stone yet, but I can use netherrack. I can use just about any block underneath 
um, these blocks. But so I'm going to start setting up. I'm going to try and get a continent done if I can. And I got to work in small spaces because if I go more than 25 blocks away from 24 blocks away from um, somewhere where I've set up blocks that I don't have glass on top of, gas can spawn and gas will blow things up. And glass blows up, has very low blast resistance and wool is flammable. I don't want any gas showing up to, to annoy me. That will not be fun. Uh, so I need to work in small spaces and then finish off a small section, move on to the next one. So hopefully this should work pretty well. I think that's pretty good for one session. I want to work on other things this episode. So I'm going to stop there for now and I will resume this in a future episode. I think it bears repeating, by the way, in case anybody didn't catch episode 21, where I set, started setting up this nether hub, that I am using a client side mod. So my server is still running vanilla Minecraft, but I'm using a client side mod called Lightmatica. And that's what shows this template. You didn't see that in the time lapse. But in my actual world where I was working, I had this template up. I can turn it off and on fairly easily. And so I would lay down the lower layer here with nether rack or something like that. And then I can place the blocks on top of it and I can see what I'm doing as I'm going. And what's pretty nifty about this is I can use my middle mouse button and it'll select the block that I'm looking at automatically from the template even. So that helps me as long as I have all the items in my inventory for the whole thing. It helps with switching the blocks fairly easily to be able to use that. So now I'm going to turn the template off and we can do a flyby of this whole area and see the progress that we made. Pretty big area that I got done here. Um, however, the map is absolutely gigantic. Fortunately, a lot of it is water, but I still do need to put glass on top of all of this water. So that's why it's going to take 32,000 glass. This is a big project. I got a lot done on this episode, but it's going to take me a little while longer to get everything set up. I mentioned in my last episode, after setting up and using my ice farm, that I have quite a bit of damaged pickaxes here. And now, after doing all that sand farming, I have quite a few damaged shovels as well. And I don't currently have a good way to repair them. My guardian farm is no longer a XP farm. Although it never worked really good for repairs. And then my villager trading farm here, uh, not a farm, but my villager trading hall here, that used to actually be the best way for me to repair a bunch of equipment. But that's been nerfed pretty hard. And I can now repair like four to five tools per day. And then you have to wait out the rest of the day cycle. It's, it's very, very slow now that the, that's been nerfed. So I need a better XP farm. So I'm going to go into the end and I think, I think it's time for me to set up an ender pearl farm. So I've never actually set up an enderman farm before. In principle, they're actually pretty easy to set up. Uh, they used to take a lot more work, but they've gotten a lot easier. But the thing is, I played on servers in the past where somebody always beat me to it and there wasn't a lot of reason to set up two enderman farms. So this specific enderman farm, we want to be in the middle of a chunk and we need to go out about 200 blocks from here. So we're at 130, so maybe up to about 300 uh, total. Um, so what I want to do is I want to see if I can set this up properly. So I want to set up a lava here. And I probably should have used regular water instead of an ice. So let's actually just grab this bucket. And <laughs> Bye, Enderman. All right, so I think I need this to flow all the way down to the bottom. So that might take a second. Looks like it's almost there, but it's still moving. And I think it's 
done now. All right, and then I think I haven't looked it right back up. I looked it up and then I haven't done it again. So I think what I do is I place a water block here and then I want to get rid of this. And there we go. Yep, it's turning it all into cobblestone. And then we can just get rid of the water in a second here, like so. And I think we're good. Now we can carefully pickaxe my way down here and start setting up a platform and start building out in that direction. Uh, and I should make sure that once I, oop, I don't want water flowing over this. So yeah, let, I'll be right back. All right, here we are. We're down at the bottom of the world. I am looking at a block that is at y equals zero. And then uh, let me set up a small platform so I don't fall off. Well, because like, I got a, all my glasses in my in, uh, in a choker box. So we can always, there we go. I got a whole bunch of glass in this choker box here. I'm going to use purple for Enderman. It just kind of looks cool in the nether, I think. And then, yeah, so I'm just going to start building out this way. I'll probably make it a few blocks wide so I can uh, fly and land on it if I need to. Because most of the time, I'm going to be flying out here. And so I might want to... Another interesting thing you can do now with 1.15 is under the accessibility settings you can set sneak to toggle so i can just press the shift button once and then it's a little it's a little scary to not be pressing the shift button and do this but it is a little easier on your pinky if you're doing this for a couple hundred blocks and you got to do this a bunch uh, it's kind of a neat little benefit so i will be back when i've got all that done if you're going to do that trick, make sure you're being careful. I was not careful. I got a little impatient and I ended up falling off the edge and uh, that's not good. So the trick worked quite a bit better when I was working on my ice farm and falling off the edge meant falling down 30 blocks onto solid ground. It's not quite so great when falling off the edge means losing all your items. So maybe I should have been a little more careful than that. I got, got impatient. I was also wrong about the glass. I cannot use glass on this. Um, glass will prevent Enderman spawns. But they will not prevent, Enderman can teleport onto glass. Uh, they cannot, however, this is string down on the bottom with carpet on top of it. And so they can't teleport onto this. So you need to make sure everything you place in this area is not only spawn proof, but teleport proof. So you can use leaves. I just happen to have a lot more carpet than I did leaves. I probably didn't need to make this long runway or whatever, but it's kind of convenient because now I can come up here if I'm coming from, you know, my nor normal base and I'm, I'm playing here, I can just press space to kind of glide down. And then I've got a nice long runway. Oh, it's actually running out on me. Oops. <laughs> Bad example. There we go. And then I can land nice and softly right at the end. All right. So I got to set up the Enderman farm down here and it should not take too long. It is not that hard of a farm. It's a design by Nembaum and I'll go over it shortly when I've got it all done. I've got the farm all set up and yeah, that's really all there is to it right here. Uh, there's some spawning platforms right there. Uh, they are covered in carpet. Normally you just put a couple lights there, but I was over there and I forgot the lights and I knew that if I left to go get lights, that a bunch of vendormen would spawn. So I didn't want to deal with that. So I just uh, put down carpet, which I had in my inventory. So I'll have to clear that out in a second. And I got a little chamber right here and I got to try and spawn an endermany or endermite. That's what they're called, endermite. Uh, and this could take a little while. I've got a whole bunch of ender pearls in my inventory. And I just got to sit here and do this over and over again. All right, I managed to get one. And let's name the little guy. He's going to be named Bait. Because that's all he is to me. There we go. And hopefully I can get a rail on here. Push it into there. There we go. And then I believe I should something like this. And then do I need another rail here? Or is it... I think I needed another rail here. All right, I can't push him back onto this rail because this happens every time. So I have to free him. jeez. Oh, Come on. Uh, I have to free him real quick from the combine cart and then place the rail. Hopefully he doesn't get out of this whole area. Oops. There you go. How you doing, bait? Right, come on over here. Come on. Can I place rails? There we go. Okay. And then cart push into him 
Come on, guy. Ooh. Uh, I think that's not quite what I wanted. Oh, shoot. Yeah, he's definitely too far over this way. So let's free him again. Maybe we can get him to follow me up here. Nope, he's down there. Okay, uh, I'm going to have to spawn another one then. All right, I had to go back to my base and get name tags because I only brought one. So I brought four this time. So I got another endermite here. Uh, come on, guy. There we go. Oh, stop, stop. There we go. That's what we want. We want to stop moving right there. And then let's remove these blocks right here. And then we just remove all these blocks. There is where we want them. So I got to lay out some carpets up around him so that Enderman can't get at him. And then we're basically done here. So this design, as I said, is by Nembom. It's actually a video in two parts because it was made for like 112, 113, and then there was an update for 114. And I actually, so both of those links are in the description, and I actually made a mistake here because these blocks, these three blocks right here, are supposed to be uh, these uh, walls right here. And I cannot take out this block because there's two carpets on top of it and the endermite is on top of that. So, I don't know. It might, what it is, is that the Enderman might be able to, even though they can't see me because my eyes are like right at the right level, they still might be able to hit me. I don't know if that was a bug that got fixed or what. Um, they're not supposed to be able to hit you, but. So for right now, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna build the farm like this and I'm gonna leave that alone for right now. So we're all set here. All I got to do is clear off over there and we'll see if we get hit. And if so, then I'll have to go to all the work of fixing. I'll have to replace the Endermite again and uh, fix that and set up the cobblestone wall. All right, all these spawning spaces are clear. So let's fly on back over, turn around and oh my God. Yep, yep, that's what we wanted to see. And they're all just standing there and let's, let's find out if we get hit by any of these. Yep, all right. Well, I'm going to have to fix it. I've been using this farm for a little while now, and it actually works pretty darn well. It's not the greatest it repairs in the world. I think that's because you have to, like, queue up a bunch of experience in order to get a nice cloud of experience around you, and then you shift to your repair tool, and you lose some of that experience on your sword and your regular experience and stuff like that, rather than just being able to hold the tool all the time. But it still works pretty decently. I've got basically everything repaired. I just got a few shovels left here. Uh, it works really, really well for enchanting. So I enchanted another set of tools. Um, I lost my last axe when I fell into the void over there. So I had to make a bunch of axes. And I can leave a bunch of these pickaxes out at my ice farm. And then I, I made a couple extra shovels just because. Um, so yeah, that, that works really well. I'm pretty sure that's quite a bit uh, faster than the guardian farm was as far as enchanting going. But repairs, it, it works all right. It does the trick. It's just not quite as fast as um, possibly a gold farm or something like that. And I can finally get this light to turn off here. This is a survival item dispenser that I set up in episode 16. I use this thing all, all the time, mostly for rockets here because uh, it's really great for that. I use it for food quite a bit as well. But it does help me keep ender pearls on me at all times. And I never actually filled it up all the way. And now I have an absolutely ridiculous number of ender pearls. Uh, nine choker boxes full. It's just crazy amounts. So this might actually overload it. But we'll, we'll shove them all in the system and let it go. But I have run over time for this week's episode. I do need to work on the floating island, but I will do that next week. I'll do an extended work on my floating island, and I will skip the nether hub on next week's episode. So I hope you enjoy this episode. I feel like, once again, I got quite a lot done. Uh, so thank you very much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed it, and have a good one.